What's going on, guys? So today on this Shoki Quickie, we're going to be taking a look at something new from NECA, and it is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 the Secret of the Ooze Super Shredder. Now, it does come in this really cool box that is reminiscent, of course, of the movie 2 well, movie box. You got the Nickelodeon logo down here. Super Shredder there, cracking thing. Secret of the Ooze was uh, pretty much the first Ninja Turtles movie I ever saw. I actually never saw the first one uh, before seeing this one, so it was very different. And we come to this side, and we got an image of the figure. We got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the Secret of Ooze, Real Toys, NECA. And we come to the back, and you get the same thing. You get a recreation of the Under the Docks scene there. Includes cape, spear, mutagen canister, and seven interchangeable hands. Yes, it is. Ninja Turtle action figure sold separately. Yeah. Good luck with that. And you come over here, you got another image of the figure, another thing here, and you got, you know, a Toka there and a Razor there. And you open it up, and you don't have a figure, but you have a really nice image of the figure, which is cool. And this is more reminiscent of the normal NECA stuff with the folding thing with the little Velcro. And you've got everything in there, and you have a mess of hands that spilled out, so we're going to be taking a look at those here in a minute. And we get to accessories. And then you come down here, you get credits and whatnot, so... Let's go ahead and get out his cool stuff. All right, so here we have most of his accessories, which are just well, pretty much hands. And you get a fist, which I believe he comes with the fists on both left and right. And you can tell they're very much scarred up and beaten and look a whole lot like Deadpool. They're you know, molded in this flesh tone and then done over with a wash. That's just a big expressive hand. And another one, left and right. And then you have the left spear holding hand. And then I have the I have a canister holding hand and a spear holding hand already on him. Now aside from the hands, you do get the TGI or TGRI canister. So this is the very last canister of ooze from the show. And it is painted in this nice silver. Got the logo there. You know, weird green ooze-ish color. And that's pretty cool, and I'll show off how you can hold that here in a second. Oh, but if we want to compare it to the TCRI one from the Splinter figure. So that was the difference. So this is TGRI, this is TCRI. So that's the difference of the 16 years later, radioactive materials. You know, it's got all the things there. So uh, same mold with the exception of the broken damage there. Though I wish this was broken in half, so um, you know, so Splinter could show them that you know it was together. So I guess in this one, in the second movie, is where he had the one that was split in half. So it is what it is, you know. The differences between the movie things. And last but not least, we have his spear, which is not bad. You know, it's painted. Silver and then washed over, giving a little, you know, a little bit of grunge going on there. Some dry brushing here on this part. It looks a little bit more like iron, which is cool. And then, you know, plastic black shaft or handle. And then come down here to, I guess, what would be called the pommel, but it's also very pointy in and of itself with some gunmetal paint on there. And he will hold that just fine. And so now we have the actual figure itself, or at least his lower half. There he is. <laughs> he's a big boy, so he's technically a deluxe figure, and therefore he costs a little bit more than the regular turtles. Like, just a little bit, to be totally honest, but not as much as I expected. And he is every bit of movie to Super Shredder, who was on screen for all of, like, a minute and a half, maybe two minutes, where his big razor shoulders and extra things here. Though, these would only work because if he was striking you know, backhanded, which he did do technically to the support beams and stuff like that. So these are all soft, so you're not going to hurt yourself. These are maybe slightly stiffer. You know, it is what it is. But man, he's got a crazy head sculpt. Look at this. Actually, he's getting into his own light here. Hold on. So let's look at that. So his face mask got ridiculous, even to the point that the bottom here just looks like stripes. It doesn't actually have any holes. 
drilled in it. So I think that is actually probably an oversight. There's dry brushing on all this. And you can see there he has some ridiculous, crazy eyes going on there. The top of the helmet here does reflect what he did once he came back in the movie and added the serrated edges. The rest of it looks very similar to how it did before. You got this new soft black part here. It also continues up under his neck. Speaking of which, I believe that's going to be a ball joint at the bottom. Yep. And probably just a swivel in the head. I don't even think it's a ball joint. All of the like football armor here, which is basically what that is, basically just football pads, is all soft plastic. And it does have some tabs in the chest here and some in the back right here that are not glued in and makes the cape awkward. So... If you want the cape wider to like come out of here, you're going to be blocking the holes for that. So I have mine tucked in between. Speaking of which, nice shimmery cape. It's got some decent weight to it. The inside is more matte. The outside is more shimmery. Probably very similar to how it looked. And then speaking of similar to how it looked in the movie, which is really strange, uh, he came out all airbrushed. Yeah, don't know why. So he had airbrush muscles to where he even had cell shading and stuff like that. So this is, in fact, accurate. Um, I will say that, like, things don't exactly line up. Like, his pecs are not lining up there to his abs. He's got a little wobble going on down here. Um, he does have an ab crunch down here. I assume that's a ball joint. Although it moves more like a hinge. He's got some waist swivel, though it's super tight. And he has some upper torso movement as well inside those giant pecs. And you can see the back is shaded. You can see how it's all done very nicely, even though you'll never see it. Biceps and stuff, you know, he did get super swole. Super swole. Uh, so he does just have normal disc hinge kind of shoulders. Very limited due to these things being in the way. So you're not going out and around. You can get up to about there. No bicep rotation, but he does have elbow rotation. So we're going to talk about these elbows because these are interesting. This is a double jointed elbow, as you can see there, but there's no open pins or anything like that. So very much like they've done with the rest of their figures, they've hidden the elbows. But look at the backside here. You don't see a joint at all. You just see that come out. And see, so this is just the top half here. But if you move it a little bit further the other part of the elbow up here moves, making just the forearm bend. That's impressive. The fact that it's essentially all hidden by the wraps and stuff like that. So you've got this really super nice joint. The only place that it's exposed is right there. And that's not even that bad, to be totally honest. Uh, one thing I'm trying to figure out is why there are stripes on his spikes there. I don't know if that's supposed to be streaks, but they're very purposeful. So I don't know what's going on there. But all kinds of layers of paint here, so base layer of black and then brushed over with some silver and well, maybe not silver, but definitely some brown. I don't know if that's really coming across. And this is his canister holding hand. If I could find a canister, he can hold it. So he could totally snag that, and that's how I've been having him hold that, which is nice. And then come to the other side, and he's got his staff holding hand, spear holding hand. And you can just insert it like that, and you can bring it all the way up to the top, if you so wish. So you can do that number, which might be how it is. But uh, he didn't even use the staff in Super Shredder mode. This is prior to turning Super Shredder, so that is what it is. Okay, so let's talk about the waist. And he's got his super underwear. So, like... Not only did his armor change, his pants and everything changed entirely. So this isn't really even what he looked like. Presumably he looked the same as he did uh, from movie one, with the exception of changing to more purple, less red. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Now you'll see right here, I've got a little bit of a divot. That's due to this giant, like, I don't even know what that's called. I don't, I don't even know what that muscle is. But it was tucked up in here and was actually causing that to be pushed inward. So it's a slight alignment issue with the legs. So if we utilize the legs, you can hear it's super squeaky. He can do a decent split and he can kick, well, about there before you start hurting things. And that's kind of the problem. And you see the ridiculous shading and everything like that. It looks like a comic book character come to life, which is kind of what he did. 
Now for the legs, we do have the upper knee joint, which is actually hidden, and that is where your thigh rotation technically is. And that knee joint is hidden, except for when you actually you know, pull it out and then you get that ugliness there. But the bottom joint is definitely still pinned. They couldn't hide that one the same way. So let's see how well that works. Get you to there. So that's not too bad. So let's come down to the leg armor, which is also ridiculous. It matches the arms, even the serration going upward. So you would have to be kicking up through somebody. And then you have his giant Gene Simmons feet. I'm going to drop the camera down so I don't have to keep picking them up. And still wrapped up. So it's actually still very similar to the, shoe, to the feet he had. Although he grew some sandals, which is interesting. And they are super thick. You know, so it does have the NECA holes in the feet. So you can try to use the NECA base if you have them. But honestly, he's pretty stable. I mean, you're going to have to get him in like some ridiculous poses to uh, probably make him unstable. So I'm going to give him that. And you do have to utilize the foot, no pun intended, to get him to hold still. So let's give him just all his cool stuff here. He just looks like, I'm Zretter. That's the craziness in the eyes. I'm going to get him to lean back a little bit. He looks ominous and evil, but ridiculous at the same time. So let's do comparisons, shall we? So let's do the most direct comparison. If I can get him out here. And there's normal Shredder. I'm still hoping that we will get a movie 2 Shredder after he has returned. Now, we will get damaged helmet for this Shredder coming out in the accessory pack. They just put up for pre-order that I did order. So it's going to have the dings and everything, but it's prior to him adding the serrations and stuff. But you can see he loses the hand blades on the right hand, gains a few extra ones kind of all over. But then again, maybe he did that. I don't remember exactly what his movie 2 self looked like. I just know that he was definitely more purple, less sparkly red. But you can see like the tiger stripe cape and everything kind of disappears. But he's still ridiculous, not to mention huge. You can see he grew like two feet, including the helmet. Because presumably, everything sort of became a part of him at that point. That's why he was able to mutate the way he was. And we'll bring in, from the last review, Casey Jones, who is a tall human. Actually, you know what? We never compared regular Shredder to Casey, I don't believe. So, yeah, he's actually taller than regular shredder so there's casey jones so if he had been in the movie to help fight against the evil super shredder he probably would have had his hockey sticks cut in half so that sucks and then if splinter was there to fight him not gonna lie that's that's kind of scary yeah that's pretty scary And then, last but not least, Leo of the Nardos. So, yeah, he still towers over the turtles. It's just funny to see that, like, something that looks like a living cartoon next to something that looks so real. You know, the turtles all look absolutely fantastic. And look, let's, let's, let's get a more appropriate size comparison right there. And I believe he picked up Leo and threw him. You know, they even show that on the on the box. So if you've got the expressive hands, like these ones, you could use that to pick up a turtle. You know, if you really feel like it. Kind of like that. Um, the only problem is there's no way he's holding that position because that's a whole lot of weight out front. But you can hold up Leo and at least pick him up, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little droop in that, but it does work, and then he just flings him. But it's still a very cool figure. Of course, now he looks like he's doing a Kamehameha. Like, uh, uh, uh. 
It definitely looks like something out of a uh, snuff film of some sort. But either way, so Super Shredder is really cool. Um, if you can get him, I believe he is popping up at Walmarts around the country, around the world. Um, and, of course, if you manage to get him online, well, you've, you already have him, so it's fine. I had an issue that had to do with uh, my address being incorrect, so I honestly did not think I was going to be able to get him. And then he showed up the next day with my address fixed so it was late but it came in eventually and i believe that had to do with NECA getting my request to fix my address at least that's what i hope and that's why i ended up with my super shredder so guys i definitely recommend it if you want it i think in comparison to some of the other figures that have had issues i think he definitely has less uh he's a very interesting rendition and of course iconic for the second movie i just hope they give us a movie two shredder and you know i have the toka and razar set coming i have the accessories pack also coming to upgrade the turtles and stuff like that so that will hopefully include another helmet and i'm hoping they'll re-release i mean if nothing else if you're going to give us you know Movie 2 Shredder isn't super different from this Shredder. He just changes a few bits. Like, he alters his mask, alters his helmet, the cape and stuff. It's like, it could be mostly the same mold and stuff like that. So, you can just do that and we'll take that. Or just give us an upgrade set. The only thing that does suck is that this cape doesn't have wires like that one does. So, it just hangs. So, you almost don't need it. So, that would be the only real downsides that I can see. But that's going to be it for this review, guys. Make sure you give me a big old thumbs up. Let me know what you think. Which figure do you think that the line does still need? I believe we need a movie April. Oh, wait. We're getting one of those. We need a Tatsu. I don't know if we'll ever get one of those. And, you know, uh, what was his name from the second movie? Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Kino? Yeah, we could use a Kino. I don't know how they would make that happen, but it would be really freaking cool. But I'll catch you guys on the next review. And remember, as always, to keep on shredding.